Welcome back to the Jeff Fox Show, everybody, right here in the 305. Rainy, overcast, typical Miami weather, man, but we're going to get into some explosive stuff as we go to the Real Man Block guest line, and I'm bringing in a good friend uh, of the Sports Brothers, my man Jason Whitlock. Speak for Yourself is where you can find them daily uh, on with Colin Cowherd, uh, Fox Sports 1, and uh, he's uh, here in the big house with the Jeff Fox Show. Jason, welcome, man. How you doing today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me, Jeff. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. Been in the news lately, this whole um, uh, Michael Vick stuff. It seems like wherever you uh, – where you, you just happen to be in all the good spots, man. Like, I like to hang out with you when I go to the club because something good is going to happen. <laughs> like, you, you, how did all of this – where did this begin? Something to talk about is going to happen, whether it's good <laughs> or bad. I don't know, but – something worth talking about uh yeah how did this whole um michael vick and colin kaepernick thing listen i'll be honest with you um I, and you know i can keep it 100 with you we've met we've met we've been friends for years uh, i don't always agree with, yeah. with with your take and i love the art of the debate i don't take anything personally but i love the art of the debate so i'm, I'm happy to have you here on the show today why do you think uh twitter in particular social media uh, reacted the way they did with the whole Michael Vick thing? Uh, listen, I think that, and this is a complicated answer that we may have to dwell on for a minute, but <laughs> I think that Twitter is smallpox in a blanket for black people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if you understand the history of Native Americans and some of the games that were run on them, and, hey, we're going to send you these blankets to keep you warm in the winter. And they're loaded with smallpox. And and so that that analogy applies to Twitter. I think we as black people think Twitter is our salvation and savior. And this is where the movement, the headquarters for the movement to improve things for us. And Twitter is just incapable of being that. It's 140 characters. It's incomplete thoughts. It, it rewards people for being highly racially divisive. Mm. But we think it's our salvation. There's just not enough depth to Twitter uh, for it to be anybody's salvation. But we, as black people, we've accepted this thing that there's this black Twitter. That should be the first signal that, you know, we the only group called Black Twitter. Black, Twitter is for black people. And Black Twitter, th th that should be the first sign that perhaps this isn't the right thing. We always get the scraps. Right. <laughs> you know, we always get uh, the worst part of the hog or the worst food or whatever. And, and when I see other groups not jumping on Twitter and thinking it's their salvation is probably a signal that they have figured out it is no salvation. And so I, I just think that Twitter is rigged in a way and run in a way out of Silicon Valley, out of that hyper-progressive movement in Northern California. It's rigged in a way uh, that baits us to sink to the lowest common denominator. And uh, so... You know, that's not me arguing that all of my opinions are right, but I think that when Michael Vick, who I think can be, un he has no motive to be anti Colin Kaepernick. Right. Zero. Michael Vick is a black dude that's been through some real stuff and is trying to give Kaepernick some advice. And it's advice that parents give their kids all the time. Uncles give their nephews. Hey, man, cut your hair and make sure you're presentable at all times. Be professional. Look the part. Be the part. Blah, blah, blah. It's, it's just well-intentioned advice. And even if you disagree with it, there's no reason to uh, vilify Michael Vick for giving it. It's... It, 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 let's say if someone gave me some advice of, hey, man, you should eat more broccoli or whatever. That, that's and, and the other people are like, man, I don't like the taste of broccoli. That, that's what kind of opinion Michael Vick has offered. But any 
anytime you know you do you know Twitter's convinced us if you do if you tell Colin Kaepernick or whatever celebrity we fall in love with at the moment if you criticize them in any way uh, you're a hater or you're a sellout or you're you know now it's you're in a sunken place. Uh, man, this was just an older dude, Michael Vick at 37, trying to advise a 28, 29-year-old. Here, man, you want to get back in the league and get this money? You know, you should consider presenting yourself in a more professional fashion. He didn't offer that opinion. of like that would be the ultimate solution. I'll cut his hair right. and, you know, he'll be in the NFL. That, that wasn't his point. Uh, but... So, you know, did Twitter overreacting and vilifying Michael Vick and then vilifying me, it doesn't surprise me because, I, I, to me, Twitter's rigged in a way that anybody who makes the mistake of giving black people good advice is going to be vilified on Twitter. Yeah, and, and, and that's the thing. We can agree to disagree. You know, it doesn't have to get personal. Yeah. Uh, I noticed you going back and forth on Twitter with Damian Woody and, and my man Thomas Jones, I'm good friends with. But I, I embrace the thought of a debate. I like to, to get to the, the bottom of it. I was critical, I'll be honest with you, of, of Vic's comments. And for the most part, I, I disagree with yourself and um, who was it? my man from Ohio State, Jimmy Jackson and the boys uh, on, on the panel. Um, I, I just think that I think Colin Kaepernick is being blackballed. Um, I think we were focused. You know, the, let, let me ask you this. Let, uh -huh. let me ask you this. Okay. Uh Michael Vick doesn't think he's being blackballed. Yeah, and I found that and surprising. Again, we can all agree to disagree, but again, Michael Vick's credibility on this seems like, you know, he'd be highly informed. Mm -hmm. He played in the NFL. He's black. He was polarizing. He, he, you know, people had very strident opinions about the dogfighting issue. Uh, you know, yes. white people were very passionate and, and tended to be, I don't want to generalize about all of them, but they were pretty anti-Michael Vick. Very and, much so. And, you know, so he's walked several miles in the shoes that Colin Kaepernick's walking in for different reasons or whatever. Uh, but, but somehow he's not, you know, somehow he's just totally wrong when he says, not all things to do is being blackballed. And, and he's basically said his production the last two years, not that good. He only can play really in one system, and it's a system that is now going out of style, the whole read option thing. Cam Newton's going away from it. It ruined RG3's career. I, I get that everyone wants to say, oh, he's being blackballed, but the, the NFL just doesn't have a history of blackballing black players. It, it, I mean, it does have a history, but it, where we're at now, 70% right. of the league is black. People just want to win. Yeah, and I would think, I would think, Jason, that, you know, winning trumps everything. You know, I'm an Oakland Raider fan. We lost Derek Carr. Yep. We lost Derek Carr in the uh, season finale a, se a year ago, and we had to go into the playoffs with uh, Connor Cook. Like, I wish we would have had a guy like Colin Kaepernick, who's been to a Super Bowl, who's been to an NFC Championship game. I cannot fathom the idea of why this guy at the young age of 29 doesn't get an opportunity uh, in the NFL. It makes no sense to me. Okay. And so I've seen it. You know, Jay Cutler is not in the league either, and he's had a better career, I think, than Colin Kaepernick. He has more arm talent than Colin Kaepernick. I saw it happen with a dude I grew up with, Jeff George. The league got tired of him long before his talent ran out. Yep. And he got run out of the league. So it happens. And there's, again, it's like there's an art to being a backup quarterback. Everybody just thinks, oh, you just plug in whoever's the most talented guy as the backup quarterback. That's not the case. And so, you know, you want your backup quarterback to be able to run the same offense that you run. Right. And I think, you know, Derek Carr and Colin Kaepernick are not remotely similar. And, you know, while Connor Cook may be less talented, 
he is capable of running that offense in Oakland, uh, you know, the same offense that Derek Carr. You know, the backup quarterback gets very few snaps uh, mm-hmm. and, in practice. And so uh, it's, the backup quarterback position is just much more than just whoever's the most talented will sign them. Do they fit in personality-wise? Will the, Are they capable? Again, if you go look at Peyton Manning and what he had in Indianapolis for many years, the backup quarterback was his best friend. And they watched film together at, you know, uh, in the stadium, at home. Blah, blah. It, 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 the comfort level with the starting quarterback plays a role. And so it, it's just, there's just far more that goes into that decision of who the backup quarterback is. And we can almost never have that discussion because we, again, and I'm not trying to be offensive or dismissive Mm -hmm. but just a lot of people have never played football and they just look at stats and go oh he threw 16 TDs and 4 interceptions he's better than X, Y, and Z and he'd be a better fit and that's just not the way the game works. Right and I you know I remember watching uh, Cap struggle uh, at times in the pocket, but again, I look at his numbers, and you mentioned it, 16-4, and four, and I look at someone like a Ryan Fitzpatrick, who I guess folks would consider to be a more traditional quarterback. I saw Colin Kaepernick up close down here in Miami against the Dolphins when he almost single-handedly beat the Miami no, I, Dolphins I saw, to play I off team. The game too. Yeah. But, but Jeff, are you listening? To what I, let's take Ryan Fitzpatrick, and I'm not, I don't think much he threw a bunch of interceptions, but again, when you're the backup quarterback, what Ryan Fitzpatrick, probably one of the main reasons why he's in the league now as a backup, right. is he can help the starting quarterback prepare. Again, now when he goes out on the field, he, he throws interceptions and he, his weaknesses show up. But in the film room, in the meeting room, I guarantee you he blows Colin Kaepernick away. Mm. And... That's important when it comes to preparing your starting quarterback. I remember uh, Frank Reich was the backup to Jim Kelly in Buffalo. I get your point about the backup. Down here in Miami, uh, in the old days, there was Bob Greasy and uh, uh, Earl, Moore. Earl Moore was his backup. Yeah. I, I get the importance of the backup quarterback, almost like uh, the, the one that's in your ear, that's a, you know um, your other set of eyes on the field or in practice. But why wouldn't they give Colin Kaepernick an opportunity to improve the way they gave Tim Tebow every single opportunity to get better as a quarterback until uh, he, it, it just ran out and he decided, you know what, let me try my hand at baseball or broadcasting. Cap doesn't seem Tim, to be getting that type of an opportunity. Tim Tebow was out of the league at like age 27. Yeah, but, I mean, everybody, including the Patriots, when the Patriots gave up on him, I said, okay, that's it. It's not going to work for him. His throwing motion. I mean, everybody tried to. It seemed like the NFL, in my opinion, wanted Tim Tebow. They wanted to save him. Uh, they want no part of Colin Kaepernick. That's the opinion I get um, just by looking at the fact that nobody's not even ringing this guy's phone. This isn't blackballing. This isn't. Um, let me ask you something. Let me let me, let me rephrase yeah. that. If Colin Kaepernick went and got a haircut, um appeared in a suit, became more passive. Do you still think he'd get an opportunity to a phone call? I'm not sure because, again, there's a bunch of other factors. But if Colin Kaepernick made the made it a priority to mm-hmm. make it appear that he really, really wants to play in the NFL, if, if, if instead of – and again, when they're paying you the large sums of money, and let's say it's just the backup quarter, let's say he makes $800,000. That's a large sum of money. Right. Kaepernick wants, you know, five, six million, maybe more to be a backup and more to be a starter or whatever. Those are large sums of money. And so when someone's giving you large sums of money to do any job, they want to feel like, oh, man, this dude's all in. Mm-hmm. This guy passionately wants this job. 
Kaepernick's not creating that impression at all. And he needs to because people have a right to go, nah, he really ain't into the football thing. I think he's interested in using football as a platform to do other things. But that's not how you keep land a job or whatever. His strategy is all wrong. And again, when you're, look, man, he should have known and did know when he took on this stance, he was complicating his professional life. And so where I go back to Vic. Vic, once he got incarcerated and got in trouble and came out, he was like, man, I really complicated my professional career. Let me seek the best help I can get in getting back into the league. So he partnered up with Tony Dungy. Correct. And again, who is Kaepernick partnering up with football-wise to help him get back into the league? I see him partnering up with Sean King and all these other Twitter people. We see that. I don't see the connection. There are people, Hall of Ray Lewis has been begging to connect with this dude. Uh, a lot of people would love to connect with this dude and help him get back into the league. I would. And people can't believe that. Mm -hmm. I, I was the biggest Kaepernick fan at the beginning with him and Jim Harbaugh. I thought he was the next John Elway. I, I was right there with Ron Jaworski. Like, man, this dude's going to reinvent the league. He, his play soured, and again, he, he became more of a tension whore. And this is before the... the the protest. I'm just right. the tats and the whole Instagram thing. He, he, you know, the whole beats by Dre. You know, block everyone out. I was like, oh man, this dude, he ain't about this life. He, he's about the fame and all this other stuff. That's when I start start, and I was telling people, oh man, this dude's dumb. Uh, he he's not doing the right thing, and so I just don't see him partnering with football people who can help him take the proper steps to get back in the league. And so I don't blame people around the league questioning just how important it is. Maybe what's important to, Cal, uh, to Colin is being a martyr and having everybody talk about it. But that's what the, go take pictures but with that's, everybody. That's what the media is telling us. And, and I, I, you know, no, the no, fact no, that's not what the media is telling us. That, that's a lie. The media for the overwhelming majority of the media, except for me and a handful of other people, are telling you Kaepernick's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Right. And it's a damn tragedy what the what the league is doing to him. So you don't think that his stance on calling out, um, I guess, the uh, the NFL, not the NFL, but America, on the fact that uh, injustices have occurred to people of color in a disproportionate manner, uh, that has nothing to do with him not getting an opportunity. You don't really believe that. I haven't said that. I'm asking that. I, I haven't. Why are you putting words in my mouth? I'm I didn't say it had nothing to do with that. I'm asking because that's what I believe. I think they're not going to give him a chance because I think they're looking at him as being radioactive. Like Pete Carroll. I thought Pete Carroll, uh, I was pretty sure that Seattle was going to sign Kaepernick. So, um, yeah, I mentioned uh, Pete Carroll in Seattle. I thought if anybody would give Colin Kaepernick a look. It would be Pete Carroll because he's always been the kind of a guy that walked to the beat of his own drum. Um, and you look at Cap's game, you look at Russell Wilson's game, maybe um, because they're both mobile quarterbacks that maybe there might be a way where they could not have to really redo their playbook. But he let him go, and he signed some guy named Austin Davies, and then he gives Cap all this praise And after not signing him. Like... I, I just feel like it's it's around wherever he goes, there will be tons of media. You mentioned the Twitter, you know, the Twitter soldiers out there. Yep. Uh, it, it would be a it would be a zoo wherever he goes. Correct? Yes. Yeah, so listen, man, it's like any problem. There are many factors, and I, I don't understand why everybody wants to reduce it to just one factor when it's obvious. There's a multitude of reasons. Because understand this, if Kaepernick was the guy he was in 2012, 13, or whenever he was playing well, people would bite the bullet and deal with the controversy. But he's not that guy anymore. And the league is moving away from the read option because, again, when you pay somebody or give them a $100 million contract 
40, 50 million guaranteed. You don't want them hurt mm. because you can't get that money back. And so the league is moving away from the read option. And so he becomes less valuable. And so does the controversy play a role? Absolutely. But there's just so many other factors that, that you have to compartmentalize and cut them up in pieces. You know, 10% of it might be the controversy. Or let, let, say 40% of it might be the controversy. Another 10% might. He's not a great fit as a backup quarterback. Uh, and I want to stay there with the Pete Carroll and everybody uh, blaming him for not signing. My instincts say Russell Wilson said, no, nah, I don't want that. Mm. And he, he ain't going to put his name on it, but it was a smart decision. Too many guys in that Seattle locker room caping up for Kaepernick, and he ain't even on their team. And Russell Wilson's had uh, uh, some friction between him and his teammate. Yes, I've or heard. Whatever. Just like, mm-hmm. I'm just not doing that. <laughs> I'm, I, don't bring him into this space. And to have these guys sitting around caping up for, for this guy when I'm the guy here. I, I could very easily see Russell Wilson saying, nah, don't want that. I've looked around, and I've studied this game a long time. I've been a huge fan of the NFL. People are talking about boycotting the NFL, which which I think, uh, I wish I had the willpower to do it. I probably would consider because I, I, I just... Why, Jeff, 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 just... just I'm Don't serious. let Twitter talk. This is what I'm talking about, how Twitter is smallpox in a blanket. Right. The NFL is 70% black, has created more black millionaires than any other industry, and you think the smart thing to do is to boycott this league. I don't know. What, I, industry, I, or what industry shouldn't we boycott then? We should boycott them all because the industry where we've had the most success now we've been convinced it's a problem. Well, when you, if the league is seventy percent black, and what's going on with cap? I, I I could guarantee you, we took a poll, and we asked, you know, um, people in general, do they think this guy is being systematically kept out of the league? Most people, I think, would say yes. Most people, I think. Hey, what? I think most people would think that most people who. Whether it's it, it probably be different from the black view or the white view. Most people, Jeff, yeah. are you kidding me? I'm serious. I think most people would Jeff, say, Jeff, you in an echo chamber, man. <laughs> Expand your. You not. Ta- who are you talking to? I think that Colin Kaepernick. What was his crime? We we're talking about a league that welcomed back Greg Hardy. We're talking about a league that welcomed back. Uh, yeah, got, you, guys. you can run through a bunch of black players they Ray Lewis a bunch of guys this is again what? why I don't understand why y'all call it racism so why what is his crime then what is Colin Kaepernick's crime is it the fact that it, he's why? an awful again, quarterback Jeff uh huh yeah again when, when I tell you when they're paying you large sums of money they want to believe you're all in commitment that you you feel like it's probably his commitment no, no, no. I said it's a bunch of different things. Okay. That's one of them. That's one of them. Right. Okay. Okay. I can... I, I can. But Jeff, uh-huh. I just want you to... Please, man, don't fall into the... Tra- we need to boycott the NFL. People are talking about it. There was a situation... people are talking about it. Yeah. People are talking about jumping off buildings and smoking crack cocaine tonight. Right. That's not the thing to do. Right. <laughs> I'm just wondering... <laughs> Is this guy, I mean, again, you know, there are people. Uh, that, you know about, we want to throw everything away over Colin Kaepernick? Well, Colin Kaepernick has thrown everything away, I think, for himself. He's one person in a league that, again, has created more black millionaires than any other industry. He's one person. He, and again, it sounds, I don't have a problem with it, and I don't want to denigrate the lovely couple that adopted him and raised him. Right. But y'all acting like this is baby Malcolm X. This is a dude that was raised by white folks out in white communities. He just... <laughs> he just he suddenly... loses his job and then all of a sudden he becomes the blackest man in the planet. Where was he before? Who was he before? 
Let's boycott the NFL over Colin Kaepernick. This ain't Nelson Mandela. You know, I I look at I, I do look at Colin Kaepernick, and and I'm not blinded by the um, by the eyes of of the you know the the black Twitter or anything out there. That's why I wanted to talk to you, Jason, because I know that we could get I would get it straight from you, no chaser. You know, this ain't Ali, man. Well, if this is a dude, Jeff. I know you live long enough. I know you've seen enough. Look, man, and I'm not trying to beat him up because I'm. T- I like the kid initially. Right. I still like him and would like to see him have success. I still sympathetic to him. If my parents had given me up for adoption, and I had been raised by some white family. Right. I would have some identity issues in America. That's what this kid is going through. That's it. We've seen it a million times. We've been to high school and junior high with kids that are confused about their identity for one reason or another. And we, we've certainly seen that their racial identity. That's all this is. It's funny you say that because the same thing I think is going on right now with uh, a colleague in the media, Mike Tirico. Like he's in the news, um, saying stuff. I mean, it, it has one has nothing to do with the other. But I'm just saying the whole identity issue of who, who am I really? You know, am I a black man? All am I not? people go through this. Mm-hmm. All people do, but it's more complicated again when your foundation. And again, though the couple that took him in, God bless him. There'll be a special place in heaven for him, and I'll celebrate him. But there are complications that go along with that, particularly when you become a high-profile quarterback in a locker room setting environment. Dude, two years ago, or yeah, two years ago, these players in San Francisco didn't even like Colin Kaepernick. That's factual. Everybody knows that. He was all to himself, aloof. The the black players that like didn't like him. It wasn't until the protest that people got on board with him. And, and I'm happy for him personally. He feels good. He feels extra black. He's going over to Ghana. Everybody on Twitter is celebrating. He's been longing for this for a long time. Mm. But that doesn't mean the rest of us have to get caught up in it and go, oh, this is Nelson Mandela. Let's shut it down here in America. Let's shut the NFL down because Colin Kaepernick can't play. Are you kidding me? I look. I look at. I look football, at some of. The, uh-huh. Foot, uh huh. Look, man. People aren't explaining to you over Twitter or in your life what football has done for the black man. And again, I don't think it's the end all, be all. Right. But if we look at what sport or what industry has actually been an effective tool for moving guys like me from poverty to working poor to the upper echelon, football has done it better than anybody. Even the guys that don't, because again, I did I never caught a whiff of the NFL, but it got me to college and started me on this path. Football's done that for millions of black men all across America, and and and, and you're ready to go to war with football over Colin Kaepernick. This is well, comical, man. I think this is beyond Colin Kaepernick. I think it's more about the families of you know. Uh, Tamir Rice and uh, Trayvon Martin down here Tamir in Miami. Tamir Rice is why you want to go to war with football. No, it, listen, Tamir Rice and uh, Michael Brown and all these people. I mean, look, the the, the facts are what out there, football Jason. football have to do with that? Football has nothing to do with it. But Colin Kaepernick, being a football player, decided to risk it all to draw attention to it. That was his intention for kneeling. I spoke also with okay, Brandon. Okay, 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 okay. Right. Like, at the police, at the politicians right. who dictate to the police what to do. I get it. But where does football come into this? Okay, my point was why should he lose his livelihood because he tried to draw attention to something like that? That appears to be what's going on. Jeff. I'm wrong? Why are you so convinced that that's the only reason he's lost his livelihood? Oh, I think, I mean, I think that's a part of I think that's a major part of it. I think it's one of the reasons teams are reluctant to bring him in, much like when Michael Vick got out of prison and Tony Dungy uh, helped him out with that. Teams were afraid to touch Michael Vick because they were told, you sign that guy, I'm, I'm canceling my season. Michael Vick. Right. 
and teams touch Greg Hardy. And teams have touched a bunch of black dudes who have had difficulties and big mistakes in their life. Right. But they're not going to touch Colin Kaepernick. You want to go to war with that league. That that league. That league is a monster. I get it. I love football. I would stop at a park. No, 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 no. no. I'm not talking about it being a monster. I'm talking about it being a league where black men have excelled and moved forward. And you want to go to war with that league. Now, Hollywood, you don't want to go to war with. Hollywood, black people out here begging for jobs and complaining every year about the Oscars, can't get treated right. They don't have 70% of black nothing in Hollywood, but you don't want to go to war with them. It's football. Actually, you know, um, if if somebody in Hollywood I felt was blackballed for doing what Colin Kaepernick did, for trying to draw attention. Out here. What do you mean? I mean for <laughs> for bringing for bringing the attention <laughs> for trying to draw yeah. the attention. Yeah. Uh huh. I, I hope when this is over, you listen to this over and over again and just think it through, man. <laughs> Hollywood, we can't get a job out here. I know we're seeing the same but, actress as Gabrielle unless, Union. Unless we find a, a a Colin Kaepernick of Hollywood. You find with Hollywood, it's smallpox and blankets, man. It's it's it, it just it's small. <laughs> the very things that have been beneficial to us, let's attack them right. and leave the things alone that haven't been. Let, let's leave them alone because they don't have a Colin Kaepernick. I think you know what you know, Jason. Also, um, before I let you go, man, because I know I appreciate your time and you getting up uh, early this morning, but. I think about Philando Castile and what happened with him. What does that have to do with football? It has to do with Colin Kaepernick's protest, the kneeling. It, it became the lightning rod for all of this. It became the lightning rod for all of this. Are you looking at it the way I'm looking at you? It, think about it. It's, if, if Colin Kaepernick never took a knee, n- none of us would have heard about Philando all of this. Castile would be alive. No, 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 no. I'm saying he's bringing attention to the fact that we can get murdered or shot for selling loose cigarettes or a broken taillight. It's scary. So he decides as a football player, you know what? Okay, let's, I'm going to risk let, my let, career. Let, let, let's, let's, let's stay in this moment. Let's be real. Right. And again, I, I, you're, you're talking to someone who lost a family member to police misconduct in me and my family's uh, opinion. Police got a different story or, or their story. You can look it up. Anton Butler, look it up in the Indianapolis Star in May of 2012, killed by the police. And we have a narrative on what happened and, you and know, they they did the death in the rain, unarmed the whole time. So mm-hmm. again, I, I get it. I get Philando Castile, Eric Garn. I get it. But, but Jeff. It's emotional for, for uh, I know you, well, I, it's, yeah, emotional. it's emotional. Yeah. At some point we gotta be logical. Right. Cause logical is how you survive. And so, let's don't kid, having lost a family member, a very close one, I helped raise, to the, I paid for the funeral, I shed the tears, mm. I deal with his mama to this day. Family. Love him to death. But, Let's don't kid ourselves and delude ourselves that when we step out into our neighborhoods, we sitting around with our head on a swivel wondering about the police. That's not re- that's not reality. That's not true. That's not what we're worried about in our communities. And we know it. Quit lying to us ourselves. You know the, what? The tragedies that happen with the police. Mm-hmm. They're tragic. They shouldn't happen. They're reprehensible, but they're very rare. That's just a fact. The tragedies that we put on each other, not very rare, and that's what we worry about most of the time. It sounds good to say the police and all this other stuff, and it'll get you retweeted over Twitter, and it'll make you popular. But that's not the reality that we're dealing with. You know, I'll, I'll tell you what, Jason, I do agree with you on that because a lot of times when you look at cities like Baltimore, Chicago, even here in Miami, you know, even I've got friends. Here in Miami, are you kidding yeah. me? Of course yeah. in Miami. I've got friends that lost 
kids and they were killed by somebody that looked like them. I bring up that question all the time. Where Where's the passion that we share for each other when a cop kills a black person compared to the passion we share for each other when a black person kills a black person? It happens all the time here, here in Miami. I get that. But when you see stuff, when you trust the judicial system and it goes to trial and it doesn't matter whether you have uh, evidence look, 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 I, look, and, and you lose. You're trying a, to wrap it up, but the, look, take the Castile case. The jury blew that case. The ju- two black people on that jury folded. Mm-hmm. And so the police fired him, walked away from him. Uh, the jury, uh, and this is, that's an opinion from afar, and I really hate demonizing juries. But again, th- you do understand, like, in a lot of these major cities, 75, 80% of murders go unsolved. So the police aren't the only people getting away with murder in this country. Yeah, I still don't know who killed Biggie and Tupac. I mean, yeah, I have no, no, they're, they're, they're not the <laughs> 70, and So when in these... Chicago, Baltimore, May- Detroit, these major where we're killing each other in record numbers. Most, the overwhelming majority of the people get away with it. Yeah. Sadly, so, you're right. <laughs> no, that's just factual. Yeah. And so it, 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 it's that we're focused on the wrong stuff, and we certainly need. To get, I would love to see Colin Kaepernick back in the NFL and earn a living. Mm-hmm. But I'm not going to get all wrapped up in emotional because Kyle, in a league that I don't care how people view it, I'm just going to say it, it's been good for us, better than any other league, better than any, and I include the NBA in that, better than any other industry. Right. But somehow we, because of Colin Kaepernick, we want to let's take on football. That's man. That someone is talking us into killing ourselves, man. <laughs> that's, you Jim have, Jones. <laughs> yes, get off of Twitter, man. I'm telling you. Yeah, I saw you. Pox and blanket. I saw your tweet about Twitter. Uh, what was it? You said it was uh, something. You said it was uh, uh, cyber humans versus humans. You know, it's yeah. a culture war going on, and. Um, I, 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 I don't disagree with that. Fake cyber world versus reality. And in the fake cyber world, football is the enemy of black people. In the real world, it's been our friend. Mm-hmm. Now, this has been a fascinating conversation, man. I think we could do this for like three hours. But I appreciate, uh, again, you getting up early and, and, and talking to us here uh, on the show. I appreciate your honesty and your transparency because... Uh, that's the way you, you know, you've always been with us. And I felt, you know, easily to, to, to be transparent with you. And while I may not agree, I'm willing to, to open my eyes and to listen, you know, uh, but I still see the same thing. I'm just being honest. I still think that your boy's being blackballed. I think that uh, they're systematically keeping him out of the league. And, and think about this and for a second. You want to shut down the NFL? Well, I'd like them to just listen to this. Listen to this podcast several times. I will. Listen to it. Thank you. I appreciate it, man. I will, man. Hey, the man, NFL continue. Is our friend. The continued success with FS1. Uh, and say what's up to Colin for us, and uh, we appreciate you, Jason. All right. Thank you, Jeff. All right, man. We'll talk soon. Take care.